I Am Sam, is a film starring Jessica Biel and Sean Penn, released in 2001. The movie tells the story of a mentally challenged man, portrayed by Sean Penn, who fights to retain custody of his daughter. In the story, the lawyer played by Jessica Biel tries to help him gain custody highlighting societal perceptions and challenges regarding individuals with intellectual disabilities. Sam found a job at a cafe, despite having the intelligence of only a seven-year-old. If not for the twists of fate, he might have continued living a mundane and unnoticed life among a group of similarly intellectually challenged friends. These forgotten children quietly existed in the crevices of the world. However, the Wheel of Fortune's occasional misalignment changed everything, making Sam a father. As he held a small life trembling in his hands, his heart trembled along with it. With a childlike tone, he greeted his daughter, Hi, you're my daughter, and I'm your dad. This unexpected transformation allowed Sam to experience unforeseen changes in life. Sam named his child Lucy, this little angel becoming an indispensable part of his life. Through the time spent with his daughter, Sam's life became more fulfilling, and he discovered the true meaning of life and the role of a father. When the complex wheel of fate returned to its course, Lucy's mother disappeared into the crowd, leaving only Sam and the newborn Lucy. Oh, what a big upheaval, Sam, neighbor Annie said, looking at Sam eagerly, extending a helping hand. Sam nodded wryly, yet it all happened so fast. I have to take care of little Lucy, but I have no clue about raising a child. Annie smiled reassuringly. Don't worry, Sam. I have experience. I'll teach you some basics. Taking care of a child isn't that hard. Under Annie's careful guidance, Lucy gradually grew up. Sam played with her, but along with it came a series of questions he found difficult to answer. Daddy, why do other kids have moms, but I don't? Little Lucy asked curiously. Sam looked at her with bitterness. Sweetheart, there are some things even Daddy finds hard to explain. I'm sorry, I can only grow up with you. Then why is Daddy different from other Daddies? Lucy asked more persistently. Sam was speechless, only able to repeatedly apologize to his daughter. I'm sorry, Lucy. Daddy is trying his best to be a good father. Sam held Lucy's hand, and she sighed. I'm really lucky. Sam smiled. Yeah, some dads don't even have time to take their kids to the park. For Sam, the world became simple. He only had to do two things, work and accompany Lucy. However, as Lucy started school and the difficulty of textbooks gradually increased, Sam could no longer help her as before. Lucy could see her father struggling with reading, so she deliberately said, Dad, I don't like that book. Can we read the easier one again? One day, Sam experienced an unexpected encounter with a stranger, a prostitute, and a restaurant. The prostitute was glib tongued, attempting to entice Sam into patronizing her business. However, fate played a rather significant prank on him. Suddenly, the police burst in, mistaking Sam for a John and hauling him off to the police station, making the whole situation bewildering. Although it was eventually proven that Sam was innocent, the incident caught the attention of child welfare agencies. They believed that while it seemed Sam was taking care of Lucy, it was actually Lucy accommodating Sam. Such a relationship was deemed detrimental to the child's development. In the police station, Sam looked up at the officer, trying to explain, I have no idea what's going on. I was just dining at the restaurant. The officer frowned scrutinizing Sam. What about that prostitute? Sam shook his head in panic. I really don't know her. She just came up to me out of nowhere. The officer relaxed slightly but remained cautious. Are you sure you didn't have any contact with her? Sam nodded firmly. Absolutely not. She approached me and said a few words first. Soon, they were discovered by the staff of the Children's Welfare Institution. Back at the Welfare Institution, Rita angrily questioned Sam about why he took such action at this time. Sam struggled to explain, but Lucy interrupted him, saying it was all her idea. Experts from the Children's Welfare Institution asked Lucy where she slept last night. 
They suspected Sam had kidnapped Lucy. The experts asked Lucy if she felt her father couldn't meet her needs anymore. Although only seven years old, Lucy understood a little, hesitated for a moment, then said, I just want to be loved. At another hearing, the coffee shop owner expressed willingness to promote and give Sam a raise because of his good performance at the coffee shop. Neighbor Annie also testified, firmly stating she never doubted Sam was a good father. However, experts from the Children's Welfare Institution asked about Annie's family situation, which hurt Annie. In the evening, Sam went to read his house. He was shocked by the luxurious house, but what he didn't know was that the bigger the house, the further the hearts. Rita and her husband were busy with work, unable to spend time together, only accompanying their son Willie through electronic devices. Rita memorized all the possible questions Sam might face in court and even gave Sam her husband's suit to wear in court. The next day, as he brewed coffee in the coffee shop, Sam clumsily dirted the suit. When he hurried to the court, he forgot some answers because of nervousness. The language trap set by the lawyers from the Children's Welfare Institution tempted him, and he voluntarily admitted he couldn't provide more support for Lucy. In this debate, adults dealt with this father-daughter relationship in what they believed was the right way, but they never asked for the child's opinion. A couple wanted to adopt Lucy, so Lucy went to a new home. Sam found the family that adopted Lucy, looked at Lucy from a distance, full of reluctance. Lucy had a new home, and Sam felt he was no longer needed, so he turned and left. But he didn't know that Lucy had been waiting for him there. Sam locked himself in the house, folding paper cranes. Rita came to visit him. When he kicked open the door, he was surprised to find that Sam had built a wall with paper cranes, locking himself inside, forcing himself not to give up, to work harder to earn more money because Lucy would come back sooner or later, and he needed to try harder to fight for her. However, Sam said, you don't understand, you'll never understand. The feeling of trying hard but never succeeding. You were born perfect, and I was born like this. People like you don't understand the feeling of being hurt because you're heartless, altruism ruined the paper crane wall. To Sam, Rita said, you think only you are suffering. But let me tell you about the feelings of people like me. I feel lost, insignificant, and ugly, as if I don't matter. My husband sleeps with other women, and my son, who is only seven, is angry with me, his eyes full of disgust. Every day I wake up feeling lost. Everyone around seems to get along easily. But I can't, no matter how hard I try, I can't succeed. Sam hugged the crying Rita and comforted her. Everyone has felt powerless at some point in life. Just because you can't see someone else's wounds doesn't mean they haven't been hurt. After this incident, Sam often approached Lucy while walking the dog. The staff from the Children's Welfare Institution told Sam that the adoptive parents had decided to adopt Lucy. Rita told Sam that she could give up custody and fight for the right to visit at any time, so Blackie could see Lucy any time. Sam moved to a residence near Lucy's, and every night Lucy sneaked out to sleep with Sam, and Sam would send her back after she fell asleep. This was the case every night. Lucy sneaked out to sleep with Sam, and Sam would send her back after she fell asleep. The next day was another trial. Lucy's stepmother, Landy, sent Lucy to Sam's house late at night. He said he really wanted Lucy to sleep in his house but he was afraid Lucy would want to go back to Sam when she woke up. He said to Sam, I want to apologize to you, because I was going to tell the judge tomorrow that I can give Lucy the love she never had, but I can't lie. As Landy went downstairs, Sam stopped her and said, I want to tell you a secret. Soon, they were discovered by the staff of the Children's Welfare Institution. Back at the Welfare Institution, Rita angrily questioned Sam about why he took such action at this time. Sam struggled to explain, but Lucy interrupted him, saying it was all her idea. Experts from the Children's Welfare Institution asked Lucy where she slept last night. They suspected Sam had kidnapped Lucy. The experts asked Lucy if she felt her father couldn't meet her needs anymore. Although only seven years old, 
Lucy understood a little, hesitated for a moment, then said, I just want to be loved. At another hearing, the coffee shop owner expressed willingness to promote and give Sam a raise because of his good performance at the coffee shop. Neighbor Annie also testified, firmly stating she never doubted Sam was a good father. However, experts from the Children's Welfare Institution asked about Annie's family situation, which hurt Annie. In the evening, Sam went to read his house. He was shocked by the luxurious house, but what he didn't know was that the bigger the house, the further the hearts. Rita and her husband were busy with work, unable to spend time together, only accompanying their son Willie through electronic devices. Rita memorized all the possible questions Sam might face in court and even gave Sam her husband's suit to wear in court. The next day, as he brewed coffee in the coffee shop, Sam clumsily dirted the suit. When he hurried to the court, he forgot some answers because of nervousness. The language trap set by the lawyers from the Children's Welfare Institution tempted him, and he voluntarily admitted he couldn't provide more support for Lucy. In this debate, adults dealt with this father-daughter relationship in what they believed was the right way, but they never asked for the child's opinion. A couple wanted to adopt Lucy, so Lucy went to a new home. Sam found the family that adopted Lucy, looked at Lucy from a distance, full of reluctance. Lucy had a new home, and Sam felt he was no longer needed, so he turned and left. But he didn't know that Lucy had been waiting for him there. Sam locked himself in the house, folding paper cranes. Rita came to visit him. When he kicked open the door, he was surprised to find that Sam had built a wall with paper cranes, locking himself inside, forcing himself not to give up, to work harder to earn more money. Because Lucy would come back sooner or later, and he needed to try harder to fight for her. However, Sam said, you don't understand, you'll never understand. The feeling of trying hard but never succeeding. You were born perfect, and I was born like this. People like you don't understand the feeling of being hurt because you're heartless. Altruism ruined the paper crane wall. To Sam, Rita said, you think only you are suffering but let me tell you about the feelings of people like me. I feel lost, insignificant, and ugly, as if I don't matter. My husband sleeps with other women, and my son, who is only seven, is angry with me, his eyes full of disgust. Every day I wake up feeling lost. Everyone around seems to get along easily, but I can't, no matter how hard I try, I can't succeed. Sam hugged the crying Rita and comforted her. Everyone has felt powerless at some point in life. Just because you can't see someone else's wounds doesn't mean they haven't been hurt. After this incident, Sam often approached Lucy while walking the dog. The staff from the Children's Welfare Institution told Sam that the adoptive parents had decided to adopt Lucy. Rita told Sam that she could give up custody and fight for the right to visit at any time, so Blackie could see Lucy any time. Sam moved to a residence near Lucy's, and every night Lucy sneaked out to sleep with Sam, and Sam would send her back after she fell asleep. This was the case every night. Lucy sneaked out to sleep with Sam, and Sam would send her back after she fell asleep. The next day was another trial. Lucy's stepmother, Landy, sent Lucy to Sam's house late at night. He said he really wanted Lucy to sleep in his house but he was afraid Lucy would want to go back to Sam when she woke up. He said to Sam, I want to apologize to you, because I was going to tell the judge tomorrow that I can give Lucy the love she never had, but I can't lie. As Landy went downstairs, Sam stopped her and said, I want to tell you a secret. Are you going to sue the judge? Sam asked. Randy shook his head, his expression tinged with helplessness. I can't take care of Lucy properly on my own, Sam said. I've always hoped she could have a mother. I need someone to help me, but not just anyone. You're the red in her painting, he added. On the soccer field, Sam acted as the referee, with his friend Rita sitting on the sidelines alongside Randy's family. When Lucy scored a goal, Sam's joy knew no bounds. He scooped her up and ran across the field with her in his arms.